What do you think about my mask? Huh? Ah, do you like it? It says, spread the gospel, not germs. Huh. If you're wondering where I got this mask, I got it from theboldmovement.com. And it fits quite appropriately. It covers my whole face. And it makes me feel like I'm going to be pretty safe going into a store or going to the dollar store or going to a, anywhere I need to go. I've got my mask on. What do you think about that? Ha ha. And it's easy to take off. So, how's everybody tonight? Everybody doing good? Let me ask you something. If I would ask you, go ahead, Mr. Pig, talk. Go ahead and talk. I'm waiting. He's not talking. Hmm. What about all these? What about these little animals here? I'm waiting for him to talk. They're not talking. Go ahead, talk. I don't hear him. The reason I did that is because tonight I want to share a story about a guy who believe it or not this donkey really like freaked him out so this clever man learns hey rick this clever man learns from a donkey and this is found in the old testament and the book of numbers and it starts in chapters 22 to 25 and also in chapter 31. so this is talking about a guy and his name uh i'm gonna tell you just in a few minutes more about it but his name was he was um balaam and he was a they called him a prophet for profit so what that meant was he was willing to uh do stuff for money it's pretty much what happened so he wasn't exactly the most godly person in the old testament he wasn't exactly doing everything the way he should but this story tonight just goes to show that when god has a mission or a purpose he can use anybody or anything he chooses to and I think that's really cool and it's important to remember that. That sometimes, even though people may not be doing exactly the right thing, God can still use them. So this starts off as it says, a clever man learns from a donkey. Now remember, I asked you if this little pig was going to talk. Can you hear it talking? Nope. Let's see what I'm talking about. After the small tribes along the edge of the land of Canaan had seen what happened to the Amorites and the people of Bashan, they were afraid of what might happen to them. So really what they're saying is they're waiting on God to protect his people. At that time, Balak, the son of Zippor, was king of the people of Moab, and he was very worried about the Israelites who were now encamped not far away. Balak thought of a plan. Nearby there lived a man, Balaam, the son of Baor, who was looked upon as a prophet, a man who could speak to God and to whom God told what he planned to do. They all believed that Balaam was a very powerful man who could come cause blessings or curses to come upon people as he wished. So what they think is, is he, he's kind of like high and mighty. So what he says or what he expects to happen, they believe he's going to make this happen. They did not understand that he could not tell them or say anything that God had not told him. <laughs> so here's where it goes. He can only do or say what God tells him he can do or say. Balak sent messengers to Balaam and asked him to curse the Israelites. Balaam told Balak's messengers to stay with him for the night while he spoke to God to find out what God wanted him to do. But in the night, God told Balaam not to curse the children of Israel because he had blessed them. Okay, so that's what he told him to do. So the next morning, Balaam told the messengers from Balak that God would not allow him to do what they wanted. And they're like, oh, come on, we'll give you some, we'll, we'll do this. And he's like, look, I may not be the most godly person, but I got to do what I know is right. Then Balak sent other men, great princes, to Balaam and promised him great rewards. See, what I told you. If only he would do as Balak asked. Again, he asked the messengers to stay the night while he waited for God's message. This time, God told him to go back to Balak with the messengers, but to do only what God told him to do. But deep down in his heart, Balaam wanted very much the riches Balak had promised him. So, oh, that's okay, Tanya, hi. That's fine, you're on now, that's all good. So Balaam went out. Now remember, he really kind of wanted the money, but here's what happened. He went out riding on a donkey with his two servants alongside. Suddenly, the donkey saw what Balaam could not see, the angel of the Lord standing in the way. 
with a drawn sword in his hand. This donkey immediately jumped aside and began to run into the field. Now this donkey is like, I'm not passing that, are you crazy? So it goes the whole other direction. Now get this, Balaam wasn't very happy. So he started hitting her with the stick, saying, hey, we're not gonna do this, you're gonna listen to me. He drove her back onto the road. A second time, the angel chose a place where the road ran between two stone walls. <laughs> so the angel is saying, all right, if you're going to run into the field, how about I stand here in between the two walls where you can't go anywhere? Well, when he appeared before the ass the, or the donkey the second time, she jumped to the side and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall. So, <laughs> so he was mad. He's like, come on, you crazy donkey. Don't do that. So he's angry at the donkey again. And he just thinks that this donkey is disobeying. Then the angel disappeared for a moment, only to appear a little further on. When the donkey took fright this time, this means the donkey is super scared. This is three times. There's something about this number three, isn't it? Three times. Balaam is furious by this time. Then an amazing thing happened. God opened the mouth of the donkey so that she could speak. And she said to Balaam, what have I done to you that you should take anger on me three times like this? So the donkey turned around and said, look, what is wrong with you? Why are you so angry at me? What makes you so angry that you have to take me aside and hit me with a stick? Not once, not twice, but three times. And being very mean. Balaam was so angry, he didn't even realize what a marvelous thing was happening. And he answered the donkey. So like now he's having a conversation with this donkey. And he said, I am, <laughs> I am angry because you wouldn't listen to me. And the donkey said, Am I not your donkey, which have always served you faithfully? Have I ever given you trouble before? So Balaam had to admit that this donkey really had served him well. Then it was at that point. Now remember, this man does not realize he's having a conversation with a donkey. He's so angry. So God opened his eyes to see the angel standing in the road with the drawn sword in his hand, drawn sword in his hand, and Balaam threw himself down in deep reverence. The angel asked him why he had hit that donkey. Why did you do that? And the donkey had really saved Balaam by taking fright at the sight of the angel. Otherwise, the angel would have used his sword on Balaam. He was very sorry that he had been so mean to the donkey and offered to turn back home again if the angel was angry about the way he was going. But the angel told him again to go with the messengers of King Balak. On no account, though, must he say anything except what the Lord had told him. Now, I started the story by asking you, here's my little pig. Do you think this pig could talk to me? Hey, Tracy, no problem. Yep, you gonna talk to me? No, nope, pig's not talking, all right? So then I've got one of Carter's little things I got her, and it's got all these animals on here on this ark. Let's see if any of them are start talking. Nope, none of them are talking. Let me ask you, what if you were in your house and your dog, or, hey, Don, and your dog or your cat looked at you and just started talking? I think I would be a little nervous. So it's something that we don't expect that to ever happen. But the story is about how this man got so angry, he didn't even realize that the donkey was talking to him and he's responding. He's asking the donkey a question, the donkey answers, and then he responds back. Who has a conversation? I mean, in cartoons it happens, but not in real life. And something, a little bit of background information that you might wanna know is that this man was, and we talked on it briefly, but he was very, very tempted to just take the money and run. He was like, hey, look, I'll do a little. So even though they say, and, and it even talks about how that they believed that, th that this man, that Balaam, that when he said something or he spoke something to about what was gonna happen or about the, you know, give like a sort of a prophecy, it came true. But they didn't realize that sometimes he would pocket the money. So he was kind of like, like straddling the fence. But in this story, 
God warned him and told him, you will do only what I tell you to do, and you will say only what I tell you to say. And since he was kind of thinking he might do something a little different, he sent the angel down and said, you're going to keep this guy on track, and here's what's up. And that's what happened. So when you're thinking about, oh, man, I'm not sure God can use me. I've made a lot of mistakes. Really? You ever heard of a talking donkey? <laughs> yeah. God can use anybody, anytime, anywhere he chooses to use you. If he thinks that it's in his will and he knows the plan and he thinks you're the perfect candidate for the job, you don't even have to sign up. You've been chosen. But the moral of the story is follow God's direction. Be prayerful about what he wants you to do and be diligent about trying to find out where he is and where you can find him. And study. Use your Bible as a study guide and as a map for your life to see which direction do I need to go. If you're prayerful and you're genuinely prayerful about it, God will help you. If you're just saying, well, I'm not sure, God, what do you think? I'll get, I'll get with you later. He might still like jerk you and say, hey, come on back. But at the end of the day, wouldn't it be nicer to have a relationship with somebody that you could talk to and, and have a relationship that is, what can I do for you today, God? You've done so much for me. Or I guess you could just get on the donkey and decide to do stuff your own way. And <laughs> he could still stop you. Hey, he's done it once. Think about that. Think about the paths that we have taken and the drastic measures that God has taken to ensure that his plan comes to fruition. Wow, what a story. We don't hear about that story much anymore. But I'll tell you what, it's in the Bible, and it's in Numbers. And if you're curious about the background on it, this one starts in chapter 22 to chapter 25. You might want to start chapter 1 and read up to 22. See if you can get some information. That's all I have for you guys tonight. Don't forget that this little pig does talk a little bit. <laughs> but not in words. <laughs> so thank you for sharing just a little bit of your evening with me tonight. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. It is The Bold Movement. And I actually have my shirt on that says... Bold and Biblical. I don't know if you can see it. Let me see. There it is. Bold and Biblical. And I started off today with my handy dandy mask. Spread the gospel, not germs. Those are on the website too. You guys have a super amazing evening, but I want to share three words of advice with you. Be prayerful and faithful. Be compassionate and be genuine. But above all, be sure where you're going to go because eternity is for a long time. After you pass on, where do you want to spend eternity? Don't forget to share the love of Christ with others and be bold. I'll see you guys tomorrow night at 730. Bye, guys.